Hi, my name is Stuart Lowe, and I am a Splunk Consultant and Source Certified Automation Developer here at Summerford Associates. For this video, I'm going to talk about how events can be responded to using Splunk SOAR. Activity on Splunk SOAR starts with the ingestion of data sources. We can take both structured data, such as from a seam like Splunk Enterprise Security, and unstructured data, such as an email from Office 365 or IMAP, from which we pass and pull out the required information. There are numerous apps that collect data from a variety of sources and store that data as artifacts inside containers in a key value format. For a first example, I will look at triaging a potential phishing email. Saw can connect to Office 365 and ingest emails from a centralized mailbox where users forward messages that they think are suspicious. Triaging these emails to determine if they are phishing or not is a common task for a SOC analyst. Clicking on one of these events takes us to the investigation screen, which acts as a hub for user collaboration and is where an analyst performs all of the event management and case management within SOAR. Analysts can work together with other analysts to review the output of any automations, see a timeline of actions taken, look at ingested data, take notes, upload files and evidence, perform follow-up actions and make real-time decisions on the data. We can also promote this event to a case, which assigns a workbook to define a workflow to follow for resolution. If we navigate under the Artifacts tab, we can expand all of the individual artifacts and see the data ingested and can expand further to browse the key value pair structure of the data. It's also from here that we can take actions using any of the apps and configured assets we've elected to use on our system. If we click on any specific indicator of compromise, we can see a history that shows us where else it has been seen inside of the SOAR platform. This menu also gives us the ability to run actions against that data type. So in this case, we can select URL reputation from the menu of available actions to see if any configured assets have any insight into this particular URL. We will select Virus Total to run this action, but we can potentially use other services too. Uh, for Virus Total, we click Launch, and we can see the high level results of the action on the left hand side. And if we scroll down, we can see our widget in the section below the artifacts. Virus Total is telling us that three out of 71 URL scanning engines flag this URL as malicious. This gives us some indication that this URL could be malicious. And the next step we might want to take is to block the URL at our web proxy while we take some time to investigate further. We can do that via the SOAR interface by pivoting on the URL again and performing the block URL action. Because we only have one asset that we can run this action against, we click launch and execute the action against Zscaler in our environment. As before, in the bottom left, we can review the results of this action under the activity panel, or if we scroll down, we can see the specific results for Zscaler that show the results of our block URL action. Here we've been able to execute a few key actions without having to leave the SOAR console which has saved time that would normally be spent accessing those other systems. I've been able to start my investigation with Virus Total and block the URL with Zscaler, but although these are partially automated, they still have to be manually initiated. We will now look at an example of how Splunk SOAR can orchestrate and automate responding to a possible ransomware event at machine speed. SOAR has received an event from Splunk called deleting shadow copies. Deletion of shadow copies being an indicator and warning, file encryption may follow. Clicking on one of these events titled Deleting Shadow Copies takes us back to the investigation screen where we are able to investigate the destination address by using the Get System Info action using the Carbon Black app. We could potentially then take action on this device by performing the Quarantine Device action using the same app. There are a number of actions we might want to take to triage and possibly quarantine the device. However, this time we don't want them to be manually initiated. This is a playbook we would likely want to automatically trigger upon ingestion of this event. This is an example of a playbook that we might want to run for a detection of a process that is deleting shadow copies on a system. In addition to the path to the right where we are getting the system information and potentially quarantining, we are performing numerous additional actions. For example, we are running three successive Splunk queries to find the parent processes that triggered this event. So returning to our event, we'll now run this playbook. We can see SOAR carrying out each step on the left, and several more widgets pop up below if I scroll down. 
We can expand these widgets using the gear icon in the upper left of the widget to make them bigger and easier to read. I can see that the containment actions for terminating the processes and quarantining the host executed successfully. A next step might be to at mention someone here. They will get a notification in SOAR and in their email and they have been invited to collaborate. This enables us to use the SOAR interface for real-time response in a collaborative manner, critical for potentially widespread issues with big impacts. If you'd like to know more about Splunk SOAR and how it can help improve your organization's efficiency, productivity and security posture, then please get in touch with us at info at Thank you for watching.